Hello friends, welcome to Helping Testers. So, in this session, we'll be talking about assertions. Different type of assertions which are available in JMeter. Now, what is assertions? So, we work on automation tool. We work Selenium for functional automation tool. Similarly, JMeter is an automation tool for te performance testing and API testing. So, when we are using an automation tool, we want that there should be no manual intervention. So that's the meaning for automation tool. That is, it is executing the script itself. Now, once the script is executed and the results are come, we have to verify the results are correct or not. For example, if you visited on or you are doing a login, if a user successfully uh, then enters into his account, then we can say the user is login and if user encounters an error screen, we can say user is not login. So when we receive the result of automation scripts, we need to put assertions to check whether the results which we have received is correct or not. By checking this, we either pass our test or we can fail our test. So assertions are put for the script results to verify if they are the correct results or incorrect results. So JMeter also provides some of the assertions to verify the data which we have received or the response which we are receiving is as are as we expected or not. So let's start. So let's start with the first assertion that is size assertion. So let me add a thread group and inside that I will add one of a sampler known as HTTP sampler and what I will do I will hit gmail.com and I will okay one more thing when we want to check the result we have been using to gather the report view result tree here but when we are using assertions and we want to fetch if the assertion is pass or fail or what's the reason we have a listener here that is known as assertion results so we can use this also so let us first save this save this as assertions and I will name it as so this assertion name is size assertion so what I say I put a assertion at this HTTP request and I say that I put an assertion that is size assertion so it gives a lot of features so you can say where you want to apply this you want to apply this on the whole response or only the response header response message of the request so size assertion when you hit a api a, a data is loaded from the server so you can verify whether that data received is as per the expectations or not so suppose i can say when we hit the gmail the size of data which we get in response is equal to 1000 bytes and let me save this and run now so when I check first this HTTP request so it has failed it has failed the reason is because of the assertion as you can see it is giving the response code as 200 that is the request has been passed it is working fine but it has failed because we have put an assertion here what is the assertion we have put that the response should be equal to 1000 bytes and if I go to assertion results here so it is giving me that the result was the wrong size 
the data the size which we have received is 72000 but we were expecting was 100 bytes if in the size assertion i say that the data which we received is greater than 1000 so it should pass because 72 is greater than 1000 so it should pass now let's see let's me say, say clear the old result and run again so it is green and if i go to assertions it won't give an error Okay, it, if there is an error, this assertion shows the error or it just gives the name if it is passed successfully. So our name was HTTP request and the name is showing here. That means it has passed successfully. If you want to check what was the size, you can see here in the here only. So... So this is the body size right so or we mentioned thousand so definitely 70,000 is greater than thousand so you can use another features that is equal to not equal to less than greater than you can also apply on various parts so this is how we can check whether the size of the response we are receiving from the server is true or wrong and similarly we can pass our test cases also so this is how we can apply the size assertion now we will be studying now duration assertion so let me first save this as the name of yes duration assertion and let me edit this i will delete this size assertion and i will add duration assertion okay so and i will save this so similarly here also in the size assertion what we do we compare that the size which we have received from the response similarly duration assertions check that how much time is taken for the whole api so if i say let's say duration in milliseconds thousand and if i run this now let's see so it has failed why it has failed let's see the assertion result so it is saying the operation lasted too long it took one zero that is one second 400 milliseconds but what we have given here that the duration should be less than thousand if i give here two thousand milliseconds and if i run this so our result is passed the reason is because it has taken less time if you go to HTTP here so you might be having time I'm not sure if we do have or not so let's check okay no there is no duration which is mentioned but yes the test case has passed because it has taken less than two seconds if i put again 2000 or let's say five milliseconds and i run this it would fail reason is it has taken one two zero five milliseconds and we have told the jmeter that this request should be completed in 500 milliseconds so this is a very important type of assertion when you are doing the load testing you apply a thousand virtual users on a website and normally in the normal case when you put 10 users on a website you roughly get the response the, uh, in two seconds now what you can do all these requests you can put a duration assertion of 
टू सेकेंड्स सो यू विल नोटिस इफ द वेबसाइट इज नॉट वर्किंग द इफ इट इज फेलिंग इन performance testing so you can observe a scenario that your first 500 request are passing and the next 500 for next 500 virtual users the request is failing the reason is as we are increasing the load on the server the time taken by the api is increasing that is greater than 2000 you must have noticed like from railway reservations website or passport red types there are sometimes a duration let's say you have to book tatkal or emergency there is some duration you will find that the website is responding low you are getting late responses so one of the reason is that when a number of users are at once on the website so the response time of the website or response time of the api is start decreasing so you can put a duration assertion and you can check whether when a load is applied the apis are taking the respective time or not so it is the commonly used uh, assertion and which is used the most next assertion that is known as html assertion so let me delete our old assertion and add a new assertion that is an html assertion and let me save this with a new name that is html assertion now what it says it says that whatever response you have received so it compares it that how many that it is in proper format or not it has errors or warning or not so you can check in html format xhtml or xml format so let's start and we say that threshold is that it should have zero errors and zero warnings that our response should have zero errors and zero warnings let us save and execute so the request let me refresh the old result and run again okay so it has failed though it is passed we are, the api is uh, working fine we have okay message and response code as 200 but it is failing let's see because we have said that this A response should have zero errors, right? That allowed is zero. What we mentioned here only zero errors, and that is perfectly right because we received zero error from the API. We said that zero warning should be available. Zero warnings, but it is failing because the API is returning us forty-one warnings. If I mention here that what is the threshold let's say if the warnings is less than 50 then a test case will pass but if the number of warnings exceed the 50 the test case should fail let me save and run it now okay and you can see here the test case is passing and there is no error because the number of warnings was 5 uh, 41 and we have put a threshold of 50 also if you don't want to check with warning you want only that this assertion should work with errors so you can mention this error only so now our test case would pass reason we it is not checking the warnings so it would pass so similarly you can also validate your html and html formats as well so you can also save these reports to a file jtid report and you can just mention the file name and what the errors are would be printed on that file next yet important assertion that is a response assertion so as the name suggest it would be putting an assertion uh, to the response so definitely it is an important assertion
I will just save it with the name of response assertion. That's right. Now, if we study this assertion, it provides a lot of ways. It says that you can provide any assertion to any of this field text response, response code, response message. So, let's say I want that response code. So, we know that if the API is working fine, the response code is 200. So, if I say that my response code should be equal to 200. That is right because the API would pass. Let me save this and run now. So the test case pass, assertion pass because the response code which we have received is 200. Now, if I say that the response code is 201, that from this API, I should be receiving the response code that is 201. And now let me run this. So it has failed. Reason is we are saying that the comparison value is 201 and what we are receiving is 200. So our assertion failed. Similarly, you can provide, let's say I want to put an assertion or text response. So let's check the response here. So let's say in the response data I am getting uh let's say this thing with 314 or this transition opacity not something more genuine would be good let me give gmail okay so this was it Suppose I want to check in the response screen, I'm getting this message sign in to continue to Gmail. So I want to check that in my response res data, I should get this text. So how I can say, I will say that check in text response have a substring who's saying sign in to continue to Gmail. Check this that in the text response should have a substring this that is in the text response it should have this string that is perfectly right so it should pass let's see uh, let me clear it and run it so it is passed because this string would be available on the response now if i just edit this i will say sign in to continue to gmail1 it won't be present in the response because only this is a substring which is present not the one so it should fail let us see yeah it is failed reason text expected text does not contain sign in to continue gmail one the same as we thought and you can put a nor checkbox here so it works the same way that if this is not present then the test kit would pass see it should fail oh sorry it would pass because we have put a not symbol here you can see it is passed now so this is how you can put uh, various response assertions on various headers message and you can use this functions contains matches equal substring or and not so that was all so in this assertion section we learned about size assertion where we can put assertion to the size of a response we can also make sure that a request is being executed in a specific duration that is a duration assertion we studied about html assertions which verifies the number of errors and warnings which we are receiving in our response and also we studied about response assertion when we want to give some assertions on the response data which we are getting. 
so that was all in the assertion section thank you thanks for watching this video